there is a hope which I, I nurse but I don't see being realized that eventually we'll find that quantum mechanics as we know it now is just an approximation and that when uh, when an electron which is in a superposition of states in which it's spinning this way or this way when it interacts with some big thing like a physicist a macroscopic body like a physicist or his, his apparatus uh, actually there is a physical decay of the wave function into a wave function where the electron is purely moving this way or purely moving the other way. And that, um, in fact, the history of the world has not split. There has been an evolution of the wave function, which is not the kind of thing that occurs in quantum mechanics as we know it, uh, but represents a... Um, something that's specific to large bodies. I think uh, some people have thought that perhaps gravitation has something to do with this, that after all, large bodies are the only ones where gravity uh, is important. Gravity is an incredibly weak force on the atomic level. Uh, that would make sense of the whole thing, if that were true. But it requires a modification of quantum mechanics. And there are papers that suggests possible modifications of quantum mechanics. Well, that's a great ways. hope, isn't it? That would be wonderful. I think that's, the, that's mm. the best hope, that we will find out that quantum mechanics, as we know it, actually breaks down for very large things. Now, it's true that the predictions of quantum mechanics have been verified for electrons that are separated by macroscopic distances. We can verify that there really is what's called an entanglement that you can have two electrons that are meters away from each other where the physical state is not a state where one is up and the other is down but one which is a superposition of left up right down and left down right up so these two particles know about each other yeah, so they, yeah. and uh, it's just what you expect quantum mechanically and it happens over macroscopic distances but they're still just electrons. They're not big, heavy things with gravitational fields. Mm. So it may be that uh, these experiments that verify quantum mechanics at macroscopic scales uh, don't really settle the argument. Uh, but I, uh, well, I tell a story in something I wrote, a true story that uh, a friend of mine who was a physicist at the University of Texas, who now incidentally wound up at Oxford, um, Philip Candillis, uh, was standing next to me waiting for an elevator. And I asked him, whatever happened to so-and-so, mentioning a graduate student who had seemed very promising and then we never heard of again. And Phil nodded his head sadly and said he tried to understand quantum mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I try and try and try, but um, I never seem to get anywhere. And the amazing thing is that we don't need to, that um, you can live your whole life calculating the energy levels of atoms and molecules and calculating cross-sections for elementary particle reactions, using quantum mechanics every day as part of your intellectual toolkit and, yeah. and never confront these well, problems. Well, I've met physicists who've said, well, why bother? I mean, the mathematics works, and, and yeah. but that seems to me so unsatisfactory. That, it and, is and, unsatisfactory, yeah. but it's not professionally unsatisfactory. No, I can see that. It's only humanly I can see that. But there's a slight analogy. It's not, nothing like so profound. I think I've heard you say or write uh, that many physicists, going back to the God question, don't really care. I mean, they don't yeah. think it's an interesting question. I can't quite get that. I mean, it does seem to me that uh, I, I don't believe in God, but it does seem to me that uh, you've got to care about it because because if it's true, it's, it's one the of the most, most important profound thing in the yes, world. Yes. That's right. I agree. Yeah. Um, well, I think the expression I used is that most of my friends in physics uh, don't care enough about religion to qualify as practicing atheists. Yes. Uh, they just don't care, and they don't want to think about it. And I do think about it. I try not to think about it too much. I mean, clearly one could let it, it run a, I mean, you could let it run away with you. I've visited organizations of people who are 
atheists and who gathered together for mutual comfort. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, to me, it smells a little bit like a church. Yeah, they're not very edifying, some of those meetings, yeah, are they? Uh, but I mean, they're very well-meaning people, and yes. I, you know, I agree with them, but um, I wouldn't build my life around. Yeah, you go along to give them a bit of moral support. But, but well, I, they invited me, so yes. I went. But, um, uh, and I think maybe you and I have also some slight difference in our um, attitude toward religion uh, in, uh, on the aesthetic level. I, uh, although perhaps not, but you know, it's been part of our lives for so long, so much oh, of yes. history has been oh, yeah. bound up with it, that you, you can't not not only be interested in it, but have a kind of respect for it, the way you would have respect for someone who you don't particularly like, but who's still very powerful and, uh, and has played a large role in your life. I'm not sure the respect is the word I'd use, but, but certainly, I mean, when you think of the great music that's been inspired by it, yeah. and, and well, obviously because that's where the money was, I mean, I mean you, you, you get a bit cynical. Well, it's not that. only because that's where the money there is. I mean, some of it, yes. Uh, but some of it seems to have a really religious feeling to it. Um, uh, I don't know about music, but you know, in poetry, there are poets, um, well, with John Donne, I don't know. I mean, he was such a randy preacher. But, uh, <laughs> but with someone like Herbert or Gerard Manley Hopkins, I think there really is a religious inspiration there. I do too. I mean, I, I and, used to be suit too. And it, I think giving up religion, we would lose Gerard Manley. I, Hopkins. I agree, and, and I'm sure Hopkins didn't make that much money from it either. Yeah. I mean, but, but we wouldn't lose Shakespeare. There's not a bit of religious inspiration in all no. of Shakespeare. That's right. And that's one of the. I mean, that's uh, that's considerably more important than Hopkins. Yes. Nevertheless, you can't read Shakespeare without knowing the Bible, because I mean, you can't you can't take. No, your you have illusions. to know about it, and he uses yeah. witches and. Yeah. Yes. And he has Hamlet worrying about sending Claudius' soul to hell, but there's not the slightest feeling that Shakespeare himself took that very seriously. No, that's right. But I, but I mean, I am in favor of religious education in the sense yeah. of, of education in the Bible and, and I suppose other holy books as well. And also the, the Greek myths and the, and the Nordic yeah. myths as well, or you can't, um, you can't understand And some of it is great literature, some of it isn't. I mean, the Bible is a mixed bag. A, uh, a friend of mine who is more learned in these things than I am said it was really an anthology of Hebrew literature and yes. some of it's good and some of it isn't so good uh, uh, well so in the in the King James version it is some of it is, is I'm talking about the Old Testament of course yes yeah. um, I, I, I can't read the Hebrew, but, uh, but, but I'm told that, for example, my favorite book, Ecclesiastes, which in, in, the, in the 17th century English is ravishing, mm -hmm. uh, I'm told that in Hebrew it's very good as well. Yeah. And, well, in fact, a, uh, an Israeli told me that the King James Version is closer to the Hebrew Bible than modern English versions because the Hebrew Bible had an archaic flavor when it was written. I see, yes. And, uh, and you get more of a feeling of the Hebrew Bible by reading the King yes. James. I remember I went to a, a, a Catholic Mass, and a friend took me to, and I went to be friendly. And um, they use th that line, which is in the King James Version, is now we see as through a glass Gla darkly. Yeah, yeah, yes. They translate it into modern English. Yeah. Now we see as obscurely, not clearly, or something yes, like that. It's it, was, it was so bad. Hopeless. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. That's translated as hopeless, hopeless, uh, or something like that. I, yeah. I, I, just awful. Um, I mean, if, if you really want to kill religion, translate the holy books into, into modern speech, and, and, and that, that'll go a long way towards yeah. it. And of course, we would, uh, in architecture, uh, we would lose so much, those wonderful cathedrals and mosques. Uh, this. I remember how impressed I was with the Al-Aqsa Mosque in, yes, uh, yes. in Jerusalem. Yeah, you, you can't get away from that, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wish to. But, but it's done so much harm. And uh, Well, I use this metaphor that it's a crazy old aunt who used to be beautiful. She's and quite fond of her. Yeah, and yes. we're fond of her in a way, but yes. it'd still be better when she's gone. Yes, <laughs> I, think that's I think that's right. What do you think about... Um, but you said, I won't re regret it at all. I won't regret it at all, no, but, but, but I, I, I get the point, even, yeah. even so. Um, 